Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of KaramMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today on Skin School, we're gonna talk about what are five things to look out for that are huge waste of time and money when it comes to skincare. Now I have my strong opinions about this. As you know, I've gotten into the skincare game with the KaramMD skincare line and Trifecta to really try to make things easier and better and help people get to the results that they're looking for to ultimately look as young as they feel, which is so important because skin and shape are the two things that make us look young and ultimately feel young. So when I see this stuff out there and the way they're promoted and marketed, it really does rub me the wrong way and I'm gonna share some of that information with you guys and uh, empower you to put your, yourself in a position where you can make good decisions. All right, so let's start with number one. So number one is the expensive luxury moisturizer, right? So we've all seen this. It literally is a pretty little package, usually glass container, very elegant, very shishi and high end. And then you look at the ingredients and you're like, okay, what's in here? And it's basically moisturizer. Maybe there's another ingredient in there as well, but it's effectively just a moisturizer. So remember, and I'm gonna say this just sort of a, as a point, this will support everything else that's coming. The skin is actually aging. This is not a, like a, an illusion. It's not a dryness issue. The skin is actually changing structurally and anatomically. Just like you know our soft tissues are as we age, everything starts to sag. Just like our muscles begin to atrophy as we age without continuously stimulating and exercising. It's like everything, in the universe actually is starting to degrade with time, right? Third law of thermodynamics, entropy is happening. So, you know, the aging skin is a real thing. And in order to address it, you need to put things into your skincare routine that are actually reversing, biologically reversing those changes. Expensive, no matter how many zeros you put behind a moisturizer, in it of itself is not going to create the changes that you're looking for. So I hear people all the time, my patients, it's like, you need to be on good skincare. They're like, oh yeah, 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 I am. I, and they hand over what they're on or show me a picture of what they're on. And it's like, you're basically just on a moisturizer. I mean, might as well use Cetaphil, um, you know, from the grocery store. It really is no different. All right, so number two mistakes or wastes of money when it comes to skincare. And that is using skincare that doesn't have active ingredients. Now, remember what I just said, the skin is actually aging. What are active ingredients? Active ingredients, for lack of a better term, I don't even know if that's the best way to describe it, but there are things that are doing something biologically real to the tissue, that's actually doing something that is measurable, that's testable, that you can see with your eyes, you can see it with instruments, that are changes that we want to see happen in an anti-aging way. So what are actives? Actives are things like retinols, right? Which are vitamin A derivatives. They're things like niacinamide, which are vitamin B derivatives. There are things like vitamin C, which are vitamin C. And you have a number of other ones like hyaluronic acid. You have a number of growth factors and peptides. And what these are doing, they're working at the DNA level to basically change the behavior and the output of a cell. So for example, vitamin C, growth factors, um, and retinols, what are they doing? Well, they're stimulating collagen production. Retinols are causing the, and, and same thing with the uh, vitamin C, they're decreasing the production of pigment at the melanocyte level, right? So you're getting less pigmentation. You're improving cell turnover. So these are things that are visible, measurable. What's the end? You're gonna see skin that has less lines and wrinkles. Over time, when I mean over time, over years, decades, you're gonna see skin that is more supple and thick as opposed to thinning, crepiness that happens with aging. What are things like botanical lighteners doing? They're working at the melanocyte level. Melanocytes are the skin cells that produce melanin, which then go onto the surface and create pigment. You're shutting them down. You're decreasing the, the enzymatic conversion of whatever you know, step along the, the continuum that creates a melanin molecule that eventually ends up becoming a part of a, a pigment. So if you shut that down, your skin is gonna have much better tone and clarity, right? That's another one of those important aspects. Across the board, actives 
are very, very important parts of the skincare um, regimen. And that's honestly one of the most important components of when I developed the trifecta. It's like every single thing in there, and there's 21 different actives in there. When you're developing something that is improving the condition of the skin, you need actives, right? So again, back to the you know high-end moisturizer. Moisturizing is great, your skin does dry, but that's not an active. It's not doing anything to you know help you fight upstream the direction of, of skin aging. So when you see all these like you know random ingredients and all this kind of like, oh this thing came from some algae or this thing came from some unique thing, you gotta ask yourself, is it an active? And that leads us to the third component. One of the biggest wastes happens when people don't look at their skincare from the perspective of looking for something that has scientific evidence behind it, right? So number three is clinically non-tested products. So for example, someone makes any kind of marketing claim and the cosmetic space is extremely liberal about what you can claim and say, right? So you say it does this, it does that or whatever it is, but is it actually doing that? The only way to really know is if you take your product send it to a third party lab, have that product blinded so the subject doesn't know what it is. It's basically not in the packaging, it's just like in a normal container, no one knows what it is. And you need at least 30, 40 people into the study to make it you know, statistically viable. And you basically test them at baseline. You know, you do these objective things like, basically think of it as like taking MRIs or CT scans of the skin. There's all these different types of, of instruments that are used to really measure the skin. You do a baseline analysis, then you put the person on it for say a month, you do another test on it, then you do it again in two months. So you're seeing the changes over time. And if the product actually works, then you're gonna see changes hopefully at a month, then you're gonna see even more changes at two months. That's how a study is designed. And then they come back and give you the evidence and say, you know what, yes, th these were the changes that we saw. And then you make the conclusion, does this stuff work or not? Now, why this is important is because I might say to you that retinol is excellent and vitamin C is excellent and you know, X is excellent and Y is excellent. But the reality is when you get these things oftentimes from different brands and they're not necessarily meant to go together, they can actually have conflicting issues with each other. So for example, a lot of, a lot of dermatologists say you shouldn't use a retinol and a vitamin C together because they can create increased inflammation and create issues. Well, <clears throat> that could be true and, it, and for a lot of brands that is a, an issue and a lot of people who've used them like that, they've had problems with it. But when you get a brand, for example, who deliberately puts those two ingredients together and then goes and gets it tested, and then it shows that it works, then you rest assured that you know, hey, these things are, are meant to live together. They're, they're synergistic and they're compatible. Compatibility is something that I don't think we talk enough about because compatibility is something that can make something actually decrease its efficacy if it's incompatible. It could be incompatible with the packaging, believe it or not. You know, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So basically what you wanna do is make sure your products are clinically tested and they support the claims that they're made. Just for your own sense of reassurance, Caramon B Trifecta, boom, got it tested. It's a three-step anti-aging routine, boom, boom, boom. Put, put it through clinical testing, came back, blew the studies out of the water on everything from pigment to you know, complexion to pore size to um, surface texture, like all of these important fine lines and wrinkles, which is so important, all these things were improved, but we weren't surprised because we deliberately put ingredient components that are meant to live together in a single bottle, right? And that's that's key. So clinical testing to make sure it's worth your hard-earned money is really important. All right, number four, big mistake that can cost you a lot of money. Getting on a good skincare routine that has all the, the right components, all the right actives, etc., and then starting and stopping Starting and stopping. This breaking, this kind of like on and off approach, unfortunately has become kind of the status quo of the way most people interact with skincare. They buy something because their friend tells them or they buy something because they saw it on an on a Instagram marketing ad or a Facebook marketing ad and they're like, oh, this is cool. They get it, use it for two weeks, nothing magical happens in two weeks, get it stuffed into the bottom of their drawer and they go on to the next one. How many of you out there have a drawer or a cabinet filled with unused or partially used skincare products? Unfortunately, it seems to be the trend. It comes from the, the lack of knowledge you know, and I don't mean this in an offensive way, but that's really what all of this is about. A lack of knowledge, understanding that if you're on the right products with the right actives, 
those changes are gonna happen, no doubt. Again, we're gonna go through the, the steps, we're gonna make sure it's clinically tested, et cetera, but you're gonna get on it, you're gonna stay on it, and when you stay on it, guess what's gonna happen as time goes on? It's gonna get better, skin's gonna get better, it's gonna show improvement over time. But it's so important that if you're gonna ex make those changes that are happening at the DNA level, at the genetic level, that are starting to upregulate the production of collagen, downregulate the production of melanin, you're gonna improve the oil balance of the skin so pores start to get less congested. You're gonna exfoliate the surface of the skin so that the skin looks more radiant and the pores can breathe and you're, you're, uh, you're not getting clogged up and getting dilated. All of that stuff is happening on a daily basis, week after week, year after year. And once you stop a product, first of all, if you're not on it long enough, you're really not gonna see enough of a change. But then if you stop it, well, everything starts to go back down to baseline and you've lost ground. It's the exact same thing if you're in the gym working out all the time and you're like, yes, I'm, I'm starting to you know, get motivated to a good, healthy, you know, physical lifestyle of activity and exercise and diet. And then you, for whatever reason, life happens, you get injured, some other situation, you stop working out, guess what happens? Your muscles start to atrophy and they go back to baseline again. And that's frustrating, but it's real. Same thing happens with your skin. When you find the right regimen, stay on it and, and, and get going on it. Again, the premise of the trifecta, again, I keep mentioning this only because these are all the things that made me passionate about developing it in the first place. It's like, I wanted something that was easy, all inclusive and you know you had the capability of, of doing it knowing that you're doing the best things but sticking with it because it's so easy to do so continuity consistency and commitment are a huge part and starting and stopping is a big no-no all right so number five is sun protection right a big no-no if you are even thinking about doing this stuff and you're investing in actives and you're investing in you know, lasers and you're doing you know, all, the, all the important things for your skin, but then you're spending your weekends running and biking and doing all this stuff and playing volleyball, doing whatever, just walking, and you're not putting sun protection on your, in your facial skin at least, you might as well not even start taking care of your skin because it doesn't even make sense. That's like you literally just eating you know, tons of processed foods and carbs and donuts and all this kind of stuff, and then going out and working out for an hour a day. What's gonna happen? Nothing. I mean, you're just gonna gain weight and, and fat and it's not gonna do anything. Now, sun protection is your foundation. It's your diet component of skincare aspect. You protect your skin from the sun, decrease the breakdown of collagen, decrease the production of melanin. All that stuff is super, super important. Your skin's gonna be less dehydrated and all that. And then you add the active ingredients on top of it, now you're building. That's like what you do in the gym every day. You're tearing up your muscles so the muscles build. That's what you're doing with actives. You're building, right? You're, you're growing the skin. You're improving it. So don't even begin any type of skin regimen without being almost OCD about sun protection. When I say almost OCD, I kind of mean you could be fully OCD, but reality is none of, no one's perfect. But broad spectrum sunblock, you know, zinc and titanium, and we, we have multiple videos discussing, you know, that aspect. Use it regularly, be consistent with it, and guess what? Your other efforts will start to show even greater results. All right, folks, one thing that's really, really important to me at the end of it all is to help people make really solid, good decisions. Every single thing I tell you on this YouTube channel and every advice I give you are the advice that I give my wife, are things that I've learned from, from my patients, learned from my wife. These are things that I share with them and these are all very, very much, you know, things that I deeply believe are the right thing to do. And I'm sharing this with you so that you can make the right decisions for yourself and see the changes you want because I believe at the end of it all, this is much more important than just clear skin and, and supple skin. This is about how we feel and having great skin is an incredibly important part of that equation. All right, if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit like. If you have any questions whatsoever, drop them in the comments below. To get more knowledge about this type of thing and all things related to anti-aging and wellness, make sure you follow the links and sign up for the CaramMD Journal. I, I write these blogs for you, more content and information on different topics I want you to know and digest and share, which is something I'd love for you to do with this video, share to those you care about. And, uh, and ultimately, if you haven't already, hit subscribe uh, for more information and peruse the library. We got lots of good stuff here so you can kind of get lost in this little universe of knowledge um, with, uh, with the other videos that are on the channel. All right, folks, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Dr. Amir Karam. <laughs>